We are coming to you from Miller Park in Milwaukee for tonight. Comcast Sportsnet presents White Sox Baseball. It's Jose Abreu, Melky Cabrera, Avi Garcia and the Sox as they get set to butt heads with Ryan Braun, Carlos Gomez, and the Milwaukee Brewers. Hi, everybody, and welcome. With Steve Stone, I'm Ken Harrell. Since we get set to bring you game two of this three-game setting, game two of the six-game road trip. We'll have three here, finish it off Friday, Saturday, and Sunday in Oakland. But in the opener here last night, went out there, did not start off well at all. Base running problems, a couple of errors, and all of a sudden, poof, we trail it. We trailed a 6 nothing one point. He came back and tied that game at 7-7. And then they won at 10-7 with two home runs in the eighth inning. But we have played 14 road games this year, and we won two of them. It's been really dismal on the road, and the Sox are going to have to reverse that trend because they're going to have to be road warriors coming up. Let's take a look at some of the numbers, and they're actually startling. Seven straight road losses being outscored 58 to 18. You see the 2 and 12 record, but the 606 team ERA on the road, that's last in the major leagues. And even more startling, 61 and 115 since the start of the 2013 season. Second lowest in the major leagues behind Colorado, and Colorado has historic road problems. So with 16 of the next 23 away from home, this team has got to heat it up on the road. Well, i got to catch the ball. But last night, a couple of home runs, as I mentioned earlier, in the eighth inning from a couple of guys we didn't expect it from. Unlikely sources hit the ball out of the ballpark and wound up winning the game. It was really a stirring comeback, but unfortunately, Zach Duke went out against his former mates, and Elian Herrera went deep. That was a two-run homer, and Chris Davis, in a pinch-hitting role, hit one 440-some-odd feet. Absolutely a bomb. Both of these guys hitting their third home run of the year, and when you look at the numbers, you'll realize from Herrera, he's only hit four career home runs. There's been two in the last two games. And for Davis, he's a tremendous hitter. He's very strong. Fielding is a problem, but that solo home run in a pinch-hitting role put the game out of reach. And unfortunately, last night, things started off poorly here, but we got two left. Got to win them both. All right, sit back, relax, and strap it down. White Sox baseball coming your way.
Sportsnet. The Sportsnet is brought to you in part by your Chicago area and Northwest Indiana Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive a Lexus today. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois. Through it all. Audi. Truth in engineering. Xfinity. Your home for the most live sports. And by Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealer. Toyota. Let's go places. Welcome back to Miller Park, where once again the roof is closed. It's a chilly night here in Milwaukee, and let's take a look at how Robin is going to line up our Sox for the second game of this series and the second game of the road trip. Adam Eaton leading it off. He had a big night last night with four hits. Melky Cabrera in the two spot. Jose Abreu playing first base and hitting third. Then it's Avi Garcia in right field. Connor Gillespie at third. Alexia Ramirez at shortstop. With Tyler Flowers getting the nod behind the plate, Micah Johnson at second, and Chris Sale going to get his first at bat of the year tonight. The defense, and now they'll line up behind Mike Fires. It's Chris Davis, Carlos Gomez, and Ryan Braun in the outfield. Alien Herrera, Gene Segura, Hector Gomez, and Jason Rogers in the infield. Martin Maldonado behind the plate, and our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Mike Fires. He's 1 and 4 this year. His ERA is up there at 5 and a half. But 42 strikeouts in 29 and 2 thirds innings. He has given up six home runs. He throws high fastballs. And living up in the zone, he will throw a lot of long balls, and that's what's happened. He's got a curveball to go with it and a changeup that's a work in progress. The umpires for the game this evening Clint Fagan behind the plate. Mark Ripperger is at first base. The crew chief, Jeff Kellogg, is at second. And Brian Onora is at third. Robin is hoping that his team can rebound on the road. And they've thrown the ball around the infield, which means we're ready to play baseball. And I'm ready to turn it over to my play-by-play partner, Ken Harrelson. All right, Steve, thank you. And once again, good evening, everyone, and welcome to White Sox Baseball right here. Comcast Sportsnet, game two of this three-game set, and game two of this six-game road trip. And before we show you our picks to click you at home, select yours. As the first pitch of the ball game is taken inside. Fires is not overpowering with his fastball, yet he does get a lot of strikeouts because he has some deception. He's 29 years old out of Pompano Beach, Florida. And the count 2 0. He can two 200 pounds. You can watch him drop that arm behind his leg and then come up over the top with it. That aids in the deception. But he will give up a lot of home runs. Adam four for five with a couple of RBIs last night. Take strike one. And here at Miller Park, 344 down the left field line, 345 down the right field line, 371 in left center, 374 in right center, and 400 dead away center. Two one pitch. Nasty right there. Low and away at the knees. So the count two and two. That was. Well, Adam looks out at him because. It's only 91, and yet you'll find a lot of guys swinging and missing that fastball. They don't pick it up right away. And we'll see what happens second time through. First time through, much the advantage of fires. There's Melky. Hitting a 254. The home he's driven in 11. 0 for 4 last night, and absolutely was robbed twice. Hit the ball hard three times as he takes first pitch strike. Told him after the game, I said, Melky, it's going to turn around. He just looked at me and said, Man, this is hard. Good eye, that's the one away. What the Sox are going to do tonight, they're going to run every chance they get on Chris Davis in left field. He really doesn't throw very well at all. He's winning that bat. He can do that. There's another. <laughs> I'm going. Two down. So with two out, let's check out our 
takes the click. The man's yard director and the crew went with flowers. He's going with Les BN. Sheena Quinn. Julianne Bartos. Megan Golden. Melody Near. Jonathan Farron. Mike Madeira. Joe Rohde. We're going to go with Cabrera. So here's a brand you. As he takes strike one. He was three for five with a couple of RBIs last night. Comes in hitting at 289 with six homers and 19 driven him. You would think that if Fires does not show him anything but that fastball, he's going to hit one out of the park tonight. And that'd be the first at bat, but he'll get one. That puts it 92. Evens accounted one. Eight game hitting streak, and he's starting to heat it up. Strike right at the bottom of his home. So it's one and two. Well, usually what happens is we are 10 and 5 at home, 2 and 12 on the road, but when usually what happens. When the team is having a lot of tough, a lot of big problems on the road, it brings you together, so to speak. His defense is catching the ball. Bobman was talking about it in his pregame show today. That when you don't catch the ball, especially in today's culture, it just puts too much pressure on the pitchers, and then all of a sudden they feel like they got to punch guys out. The other team scores now puts pressure on your offense so you've got to catch the baseball. That's the first rule in the game. Another big factor is when you're scoring seven runs on the road you expect to come away with a win in that one. And if you're losing games where you're scoring. Then you got to look to the defense because that's been one of the big problems. Well the defense is everything really because we gave away in the last road trip we had. And then we gave two games away when we got swept in Minnesota. We've given games away defensively. When you're going to give the other team 30, 31 outs and you're getting 27, you're probably going to lose. And there you see what Fires is trying to do. He's trying to move it in, out, up, down. He's going to try to get him on a fastball away. Let's see if he can get it there. Full count with Avi on deck. Maldonado is the backup catcher. Jonathan Lucroy is hurt. He'll be back in two and a half weeks. In the meantime, Maldonado is getting his opportunity. I know I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of pitchers over 56 years I've been in this game. Of all, kind of all abilities, Hall of Famers, mediocre pitchers, some that maybe even shouldn't have been there, and the majority, vast majority will tell you, I want the best defensive team out there behind me that we have. That's high in the left field. He makes the catch. One, two, three inning after half inning of play. It's our guys nothing and their guys coming to bat.
Listen, Braun at the top with Gomez, Rogers, and Herrera in the middle, followed by Maldonado, Gomez, and Fires. The defense, and now they'll line up behind Chris Sale left to right. Cabrera, Eaton, and Garcia in the infield. Gillespie, Ramirez, Johnson, and Abreu. Tyler Flowers behind the plate. And our Lexus pursuing perfection starting pitcher is Chris Sale. You look at that ERA, and it's somewhat shocking. It's up close to six. He's two and one this year. And he's got to get more consistent. He realizes that. First pitch strike to Segura. Hitting at 262, a couple of homers. He's driven in 12. Last year, he had 246 for the Brew Crew. Five homers, knocked in 31. Brewers hitting at 231 this year as a team with a 4.59 team ERA. Brewery is their everyday starting shortstop. They got him from the Angels. He was expendable because of Eric Ibar. He's fit in nicely. The only question they had was could he hit well enough to keep that job every day because defensively he's one of the better shortstops around. Breaking ball, fouled over. Souvenir. The book on Segura last year was that he would swing at just about everything. You didn't have to throw him strikes. You could get it close, and he was hacking. So that'll be the big question mark. Can he reach his potential by getting selected? That ball hit, slicing away, and he can't get there. So that's going to be at least a triple. Back him up. Second triple of the season. Looks like he is shaken up at third base. Good effort by Adam Eaton. He got a good jump. He just could not get there. You can see from up here that ball was just slicing away from him. Tyler wants it inside. And Chris gets it right down the middle. So he misses his spot and Segura makes him pay. Eaton with a big effort only to come up short. And Segura then fast enough to beat the play easily at third. Here's Chris Davis. A long home run last evening. He had a rolling curve ball. Boy did he put a charge into it. Up there in Bernie Brewer territory. Zach Duke came on to a rolling breaking ball. And the pitcher knows by the sound. He doesn't even have to look up. You can tell by the sound it's long gone, and that's exactly what Zach heard last night. Well, Zach is, that's going to happen. That's baseball. That game didn't, losing that game last night, you never like to lose, but it didn't bother me one. Club came back from a 6 0 deficit, tied at 7. And then the guy who's been spectacular out of the bullpen just made two mistakes. They didn't pop him up. They didn't ground it out. They hit him out of the ballpark. So we lose. I mean, I, I slept real good last night because that club came back and tied it at seven. And the interesting part about the fact that it was Herrera is that when you looked at all the scouting reports, what they said was he was a jack of all trades, play a lot of different positions, but no pop whatsoever. In the meantime, he's hit two home runs in two consecutive games. And that wasn't a cheapy last night. He got most of that. Pretty good pitch. Didn't get it. Had a piece of the corner. Another thing we didn't get last night was any pitches either. Which they did. Our guys didn't beef about it. He gone. Well, the formula. One out. The formula. Sox fans have heard me say for a long time now. 
is that's just a gas. You're going to win 60, you're going to lose 60. It's what you do with those other 42 that count. And that was not one of the 42 last night. That was just in the lose 60 column. One of the reasons why that last pitch was a good pitch was that Tyler Flowers wanted it inside. And Chris got it there above the hands of Davis and he just overpowered it. Infield is back. They're going to concede the run. So here's Ryan Braun. Hitting a 257, six homers, 17 knocked in. He was one for three with an RBI last night. This guy is signed through 2020. With a club option for 2021. Till he hurt his thumb. He was one of the more devastating players around, and they're hoping he can come back now that he has no pain in that bottom hand. Well, there should be no reason that he couldn't come back. Now he's been a great hitter. Look at the career numbers 305. He's driven in a lot of runs. He's been the face of this organization. And now they've taken care of the nerve problem in his thumb. He has no pain. Get over there. Give him the feed. So Segura scores, and it's 1 nothing Milwaukee. That was pretty good hitting on the part of Braun because that was a fastball 96 in on his hands. And Braun knowing with the infield back a ground ball drives home the first run of the game. You don't turn he didn't turn the head of the battle. He's looking to go the other way. He gets the job done. This is what the big run producers do when they have a chance to drive in a man from third base with less than two outs. You don't try to hit it out of the ballpark. Let's get a ground ball. You get a hit, you get a hit, but he did the right thing. So here's Gomez. Drop. Picked up. That'll be an error. You can't bobble the ball, drop the ball, or anything else with Gomez running. He's just too fast. So that is the fifth era. And he did beat it. One more pitches. But Chris says here's Jason Rogers, first baseman. Rogers with a 296 batting average and a 296 on base percentage, which shows you that he swings at everything. You got him picked off. They had him at second base, but comes out of the glove. And Micah Johnson, very good chance that'll be E4. We'll see what the official score says. They give him a stolen base. Somewhat surprising. He certainly will take it. Chris picks him off by a wide margin. It's just a question then of getting an angle. Jose makes a good throw. He just drops it. I'm not sure where the stolen base comes in, but. Apparently it does. Throw is right there. Milwaukee has always had what Brewer players love. <laughs> the, <laughs> the hometown <laughs> scoring. The hometown scoring is right. Really? Gomez, uh, Gomez Milwaukee will, has always had that. Gomez will steal 150 in calls like that. One and one to count. Micah picks up his fourth error. Well, they can't give him an error. They're going to give him a stolen base. Nope, he cannot. So he will not pick up an error, which he should be. Perfect throw. Yeah. 
Full count. So he had to throw six more pitches. And they do come up with a run. Lead off triple by Segura, knocked in by Braun. It's one nothing Brew Crew. Joining us now from CSNChicago.com, Dan Hayes. And Dan, what you got for us? Well, earlier today, Rick Hahn announced that Carlos Rodon is officially in the rotation. They're transitioning him. Basically, he'll start, I would say, somewhere between 22 to 25 times. It's not going to be every time the rest of the way. They fully intend to monitor the workload just like they've done with Chris Sale in the past. And basically, they said if the time is now, though. We saw... Saturday night, how good he could be, even when he was a little bit off, and they said that's it's ready. They're they're ready. This is the step in the development for him to take, and so Carlos Rodon is in the rotation. They've also talked a little bit about the future of Hector Nuese, and what did they talk about? Uh, Rickon said this is not the end of starting for him. They're going to need him. They're going to have to spot start him here and there. You know, they they know that Carlos Rodon probably shouldn't go too many innings. I think they have not said a magic number. I mean, you look at Chris Sale. From 2011 to 2012, he went from 71 to 190 innings. So it's potentially somewhere around 150, 160 innings. But with that said, they want to keep Hector Nuesi one in the bullpen, but also they know he's going to need to come in and fill in some spots where they give Rodon a few extra days in between starts. And, you know, it, 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 it's important that for Nuesi to stay in that mindset is what they were basically saying today. Well, they've got one one of, if not the best pitching coach in the game, and Don Cooper, so he know he's broken a few guys in before. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, Rick Hunt said we don't have a magic formula. It's not they've it's worked well with Chris Sale, but at the same time, we're gonna have to play this by ear. So they, they have a tentative schedule mapped out right now, but they also know that they're gonna have to adjust based on what Rodon tells them how he's feeling. You know, just when it, it's apparent that he needs a few days in between a start. I think there's another factor, and that would be that when Chris Sale came in at 6'6", he weighed 168 pounds. Eventually, maybe he swelled up to 172. You got Carlos Rodon, who's 6'3", but he's a strong guy. It's a completely different body type, and it's not one size fits all as far as what you do with one guy necessarily you do with another. I would assume they're going to take a look at that and adjust accordingly. Absolutely, and, and that's the thing. They, they, you're right, the body type, I mean... It, Carlos Rodon, guys have said, has tree trunk legs. The, the lower half is, you know, it, he just looks like that horse, basically. And, and they they will adjust, and, and I think that's why they're trying to keep an open mind with this because you look at it right now, he's got 22 innings between the minors and the majors, and there's 27 turns left in the rotation. He starts Friday in Oakland. If he was going six, six innings to start at that, it's 162 innings or somewhere around that. And, and so that puts him around 180. And 
they want him to be as strong at the end of the year. And we saw that with Chris Hill and Jose Quintana in 2012 as they transitioned, that their Septembers weren't as strong. So they're, they're going to do what they can to monitor that workload and keep him fresh. Yeah, three trunk legs for Rodon and out-of-bounds stakes for Chris Sale, huh? <laughs> Dan Hayes, good stuff, buddy. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> Connor with a 1-1 count. 2-1. and one. All the defenses are different with Connor Gillespie. We see some teams play him straight away, both the infield and the outfield. We see other teams putting on a shift which they're doing in the infield, but they have the outfield with Gomez in center a step or two into left center. So kind of a unique defense for Milwaukee. He did not go. And the count three and one. Yeah, Coop. Coop knows what he's doing. He will and he will tell Robin and Rick. Hey, we're going to shut him down. This is enough. Or are he going to say, okay, he's all right. That ball hit right at him. Going back. He's there on the track. So Gomez, who made a stunning catch last night off the bat of Melky Cabrera to save a couple of runs. He's probably got more range or certainly as much as anybody, any center fielder in the game. Well, he was shaded over toward left center, and that's exactly where... Connor hit it, although he hit it hard. Gomez was right there to make the play. Yeah, that's one reason that Coop has been here for so long, done such a great job. He will tell you what he thinks, and his results have been absolutely terrific. There he is. Jovial. Don Coop. Sometimes not so jovial. <laughs> Occasionally. He's the antithesis of, <laughs> of jovial. <laughs> Occasionally not the most jovial guy I've ever seen. When he puts that uniform on, he then no joviality <laughs> in him. <laughs> Great job. Oh, and to the count to Alexei. one nothing Brew Crew here in the top of the second inning. He got a hanger, shoves it out there in the right center field. So that's a one, two, three inning. He's retired. All six he's seen has Mike Fires, and he leads it one nothing. game using the hashtag White Sox Talk and make sure to follow us on Twitter at CSN White Sox. Well, nothing bad, guys. Here in the bottom of the second, it'll be Herrera, Maldonado, and Gomez. No, out of bounds, sticks. that's what I used to call Payne Stewart, OB, because he'd come home when he had time off. We'd play golf. He lived on the 12th over at Bay Hill. 
put on his Bermudas, and it looked like two white out-of-bounds steaks. <laughs> Plus, back in those days, I was a smoker. Because that's popped up. And every round, Payne would smoke at least a half a pack, and he never bought a pack of cigarettes in his life. Every other hole would come over my cart and take one or two. He was a terrific guy. Terrific guy. Well, two for four with that home run last night. Pops that one into right center field. Enjoy the benefits of being a White Sox season ticket holder by purchasing a prorated 58 game full or a 19 or 20 game split season ticket plan. Great locations are still available. Packages begin during the week of June 5th. To purchase, visit WhiteSox.com or call 312 674 1000. Here's Maldonado. 0 for 3 last evening. Hitting at 188, a couple of homers. He's driven in seven. Maldonado can really catch. But he hasn't had a hit on a non fastball all year. Chris just also learned something that doesn't have to use his best heater to throw it by him upstairs. Maldonado's strong. Hit 234 formers and Roman 16 in limited action. He gets some power to the opposite field if he can catch up to one. One and two the count. He gone. 93. Strikeout number two. And our pitch tracks will show you that he kept it upstairs. And Maldonado's not going to be able to catch up to it up there. Gomez, a natural shortstop who's seeing some time at second base. He's really their insurance policy in case Segura doesn't hit. They've got Scooter Jeanette, who will play a whole lot of second and will face the right handers. Jeanette hit 289, nine homers, and drove him 54 no, last they, season. They like him. They he's believe, young. They believe he's going to be. Very much of an offensive second baseman. I talked with Craig Council. He said he liked him a lot. Scooter just 24 years old, so he gone. A slider down and in. One, two, three inning. A couple of strikeouts for Chris. We'll go to the third, trailing one nothing.
Cavs flip over to CSNChicago.com immediately following the game for Bulls Post Game Live. Now you can get instant reaction from Mark and Will. And highlights, post game interviews, and more after every Chicago basketball playoff game on CSN. I'm on Bulls. Defense, defense, defense. Tyler takes ball one. Tyler hitting at 207. A home where he's driven in six. One nothing. Milwaukee. 2 0 the count. Myers is one of the most prolific fly ball pitchers in baseball. And because of that, he will give up the long ball. Very rarely will he throw ground balls. Well, coming in, he's thrown six home runs in less than 30 innings. 29 and two thirds. That's out number one. Micah Johnson at 264. No homers. He's driven in two. He's going to be thinking about laying it down, and Herrera at third is thinking along the same path. His chances of drag bunting, if he could ever get the technique, as opposed to push bunting, he would be better off two to one. No, he's going to. If he gets it by the pitcher, it's almost impossible to beat him to first base. He can't. If he gets it by the pitcher, dragging it, it's, it's just a base hit. But opposing teams know that he very rarely does drag bunt because they keep on playing him back on the right side. There's a strike and three and one to count. A lot of guys do not like to drag bunt because sometime in their career they tried it and they foul one right off their they got face hit. or yeah. mask. Or not mask but helmet. They'd much rather push bunt. It was 3 0, it's now 3 2. Big gap in right center field if Mike can get, get out ahead of one. Watch out. Young man's got a souvenir and a Sox jersey. Got him in head part of the plate. With three strikeouts for Fires. Game back from the 3 0 count, so here's Chris. Fires has retired everybody he's seen. And Chris. Put a Mark Burley on it. Here in Milwaukee. So far, not so much. Boy, he rode John Garland after that home run. So he rode him hard and put him away with. So four strikeouts. He's retired nine in a row, and he leads it one nothing.
Time later in the game brought to you by Miller Light. Mike fires the pitcher will lead it off. For the Brewers here in near half of the third inning. They lead it one nothing first inning run if you're just tuning in lead off triple by Segura. And Ryan Braun knocked him in. For the ground ball. First pitch strike. Players is not one of those pitchers that hits the ball very well. He's 0 for 9. You know, pitchers are the poster child for proving that you can learn how to hit a little bit at the major league level. And a great example is a guy named one out. Was a guy named Jim Catfish Hunter. When he came into the big leagues, he couldn't hit that ball over there. And he started working on his hitting. And I'm a son of a gun. About five, four, five years later, he was a good hitter. And I mean, that's just proof that you can learn how to hit. Well, I think there's a lot of Pitchers getting to the major leagues that were very good hitters as young players. And then they got away from hitting because obviously their priority is throwing the baseball. That's how they make their living. But if they are playing in the National League, you take enough swings. Well, back in those days, they didn't have the DH. No. Well, that's true. Segura with that triple and run scored. Melky. I'd like to pass along congratulations to George Flynn Paris, who owns the Palace Grill. He's owned it for 37 years. This is the anniversary today. Been there many times. Maybe on the way to a Hawks game, you've been there seeing some of the luminaries in town. At least 40 points of my cholesterol total is responsible to the Palace Grill. Congratulations, George. Get over your goal. He's a good man. You can guarantee two things pretty good food and terrible jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Davis struck out his first trip. Inside outs that one. High can of corn. And a quick one, two, three innings retired seven in a row, but he trails at one nothing.
career in the sports industry then attend the White Sox career fair on Friday May 22nd. Network with representatives from top sports organizations and stay to watch the game. Admission includes the fair and a game ticket. To purchase visit whitesox.com slash job. At a meeting we'll lead it off here in the top of the fourth inning they lead it one nothing and Mike Fires has retired the first nine he has seen. The big White Sox. Happy birthday. To one of the great players the game has ever seen and one of the great people the game has ever known and one of the greatest ambassadors we've ever had and that of course is Yogi Berra. 90. 90 years old. What a wonderful wonderful man. And a great player three time MVP. Off the end of the bat. I remember the first time we went into Yankee Stadium. I was a kid. Whitey Ford was pitching and Yogi Berra was catching. And here's a kid from Savannah, Georgia. With two of the immortals. Going up there. And I was I was so awed I forgot to swing the bat. <laughs> Yankee Stadium were Babe Ruth and Lou Gary and Mickey Mantle was in center field in that game and all those players and here I am I'm just absolutely awestruck. There's a strike to Cabrera who had a hard comeback at the fires. Yogi was talking a mile a minute. And we had a chance to play golf in St. Petersburg at the players tournament. Baseball players tournament. Yogi played left handed and putted right hand. I said a good short game. <laughs> he was close enough He's to the ball. Very close to the ball. <laughs> Get it. Come on milk milky. Fires that one over into our dugout. Elke taking a look. Let's scoot it over the top. And hopefully everybody's okay. If you're going to sit that close, you better be aware. Well, if you get hit, it's your own fault. Now, I'm not talking about on a carom, because anybody can get hit on a carom. He did not go. If you get hit on a line drive, that's your fault. Back souvenir. Players doesn't throw many curveballs to guys when he's got them down two strikes. Looking at Maldonado, that's a fastball. Let's see where he throws it. And another souvenir. Myers is a product of the Milwaukee system. And he was drafted relatively down there. 22nd round back in 2009. Here he is, a starting pitcher in the big leagues. Segura on the move. Two out. And here's Jose. He popped up to left field. Well, after seeing him one time and realizing that he does throw some high fastballs without a whole lot on it, you'd think that Jose would break up the perfect game. They're playing him straight away, very deep. And Gomez is up the middle at second base. There it was. Get his fastball right down the middle. But again, he drops that ball behind his leg before he delivers it. 
giving him probably another three four inches on that fastball. Well, somebody's been getting to him. One and four with 5.46, 37 hits, 29 and two thirds innings coming in. And those 29 and two thirds as you touched on six home runs. Yeah. We shook out the fastball and the fastball away, both the curve and the slider. Now he goes back to the curve. That's a fair ball. Low throw. Now he's going to get second base. Goes into the camera well. Let's see if that's a hit in an error. Is Herrera? Had to go down the line and then threw it up the line. And that part of it's pretty good, but it takes him into foul territory. And then no chance for Rogers at first base. No, it's definitely going to be an error. And with him having not given up a hit, it's going to be tough for him to get a hit. Pick him up. Two and oh. Off of him. That's going to be the first hit. That's going to be, it should be the second hit. When that ball took him into foul ground, that's. Yeah, I, I thought, I thought you'd give me a hit in the air on that first one, but. The no hitter. Perfect game by the boards. Now let's see if the boys can work on that shutout. Joe McEwing. Seeing the ball stay in the infield for a brave points stay on the bag. I'm gonna put a base it down for a brave to base it. So you can cancel the post game show. Gunners hit the ball the hardest so far. Facing Gomez all the way back to the track in left center field. Two outrunners at the corners. Curve ball. No. Get a couple of guys on, can't do anything with it, and it's still one nothing. Brew crew.
today, T-Mobile game changer. And a three-run walk-off homer against Steve Ciszek. He's blown a couple of saves in a row. Scott went three for four, drove in three, scored a couple, and threw out a runner at home. For a T-Mobile game changer, the Red Hot Dodgers. Ahead by five games in the West and winners of four in a row. And Scott making Andy proud. Here's Ryan Braun to lead it off. 0 for 1 with the RBI. Segura led it off with a triple. Davis struck out, then Braun hit a ground ball right side and scored. Brewer shortstop. One and one to count. That slider biting down and in. Right pitch, just a little too much. Chris tonight is throwing a slider that's late breaking, not staying on the same plane all that long, and so he's a lot more difficult to hit when he throws that kind of slider. Look at the pick by Chris behind the back. Yes. <laughs> One out. It helps if you can field your position, but you don't usually think about doing this. There's no way to work on it. You just put the glove behind you. If it sticks in it, well, so be it. That's what happened. And that retires a pretty tough hitter. That is Mark Burley-esque. Right there. Here's Gomez. He reached on an error. Big grip at that fastball. Bob Uecker, the Hall of Fame broadcaster of Milwaukee, done a field before the game. Ryan Braun said that Carlos Gomez hit a home run in batting practice, but he hit it into the upper deck in left field. And Uecker said that that couldn't happen. I mean, that you can't hit it up there. It's over 500 feet. So he said he did hit it up there, and then Gomez came in in batting practice today and hit two of them up there. You can stick that one in your pocket. That's what he used to do all the time with the Minnesota Twins. He could both push it to the right side and he could drag it to the left side. And when you think about the power this guy has, and it's enormous, you don't think about him doing this. Gunner was deep at third. A perfect butt. And then, of course, they're really isn't anything to do with it. So the official score gave him a stolen base back in the first inning. They had him picked off. Abreu made a perfect throw to Micah Johnson, who did not catch it. His glove. He tried to do too much too quick. So he picked up. A gift from Tim O'Driscoll, the official scorer, who is a good official scorer, by the way. Rogers cannot get that one. This is only his fourth start of the year, the 18th game he's played. Whether you like that guy or not, and a lot of people don't, which doesn't bother Carlos at all. 
Carlos Gomez, one of the most exciting players in this game, and it has been since he came into the league. There is very little he can't do. Got a gun. Nobody covers more ground in center field. And he is tremendously strong. Because Yuki was right, it is over 500 feet to hit it into that upper deck. Strike. Must be something about Chicago teams that these Brewers hitters like. Rogers hit his first career home run against the Cubs on Saturday. Herrera hit just his third career home run against the Cubs, then followed it up last night with his fourth against our Sox. And Davis hit a pinch home run. Just his third of the year, that was last night. He go. Yes, 95. Two down. This using that high fastball very well, and just overmatching a lot of these Brewer hitters. When you have an uppercut swing as Rogers does, up there with anything on it, you're just not going to be able to catch up to it. There's only two other center fielders that I can think of that could cover as much. Ground and center field is Gomez. Maybe one of them could cover a little more. First one's Mickey Mantle. The next one's Willie Wilson. You might want to drop Willie Mays into there also. Well, Willie was great, but he couldn't run like those guys. He couldn't run like Mickey. He couldn't run like Gomez, and he couldn't run like Willie Wilson. Willie was fast. That's outside. Change up. Well, five two. Garcia and right. He's getting his chance to play because Aramis Ramirez has had back problems. Sidelined him now for four straight games. But this Brewer team. Which is getting better under Craig Council, who's taken over. He's in his eighth day as the manager of this team. They're going to be a whole lot better when Ramirez can play third and Luke Croy can get behind the plate. Jonathan Luke Croy is the leader of this team. He's a good catcher, he's a terrific hitter and a run producer, and without him, that leadership is missing. There he got it picked off again. He gone. And that will end the inning. We go to the fifth. It is still 1 0 Milwaukee.
As you check out our Comcast Sportsnet tail of the tape, there it is, a first inning run, leadoff triple by Gene Segura. Davis struck out, and Ryan Braun knocked him in with a little simple ground ball to the right side. Alexei fouls it away. He went out to center field. He got a rolling breaking ball and didn't get to it. He certainly should be able to handle Fires high fastball. Because if he can handle fastball from Roldis Chapman, he can handle one from Fires. Not going to handle that almost to Chinberger. Yeah, unless he can. He's the best. He's the best right-handed fastball hitter we have on the team. This one rides up and in. This is the best slider that Fires has thrown tonight. We're in a perfect spot. That's a fair ball right over the bag. So Alexi in the second with a leadoff double. That's his ninth two bagger. Mark Ripperger on the call. Pointed fair all the way as Alexi gets a fastball, takes it right down the line. No chance at all for Rogers. And fortunately, the ball doesn't carry him out to Braun. Kind of hangs up off the padding there. And there's a tying run at second base. Here's Tyler. He lined out to Chris Davis in left field. Those fires remind you a little bit of. Well, if he was taller, his use of high fastballs is like Chris Young. Because there's some deception. But Chris hides the ball, but from 6'10, he gets a lot better angle than Fires does. Reminds me a little bit of James Shields. Well, he wish he had Shields change up. <laughs> he wish he wishes every day that he had that. There's a lot of guys wish they had right that. Right wish that. Yeah. They're the numbers so far, but a threat here in the fifth inning. I'm not talking about stuff wise. I'm talking about just in his wind up and the way he hides the ball pretty well. Tyler trying to move it to the right side. If you're going to top out at 92, but mostly throw 90 and 91, you better have some deception. If you allow that hitter to see it from 60 feet, they're going to probably tattoo you. Two one pitch. That ball hit in the left center field. Nobody's going to get that one. One hop. So here comes Alexa. He's going to score back to back doubles here in the top of the fifth. And this game is tied at one. RBI number seven for Tyler Flowers. This is a straight change, and it's not a particularly good one. As Tyler. Kept the hands back and got a whole lot into this one. So here's Micah Johnson with Chris Sale on deck. And he fouls that back. Bit of a rock and a hard place for some managers here. 
Okay, well, you get the pitcher coming up next. That's what and, I'm saying. You know, so you bunt him over, and you got Chris Sale with a man at third. I think that's why he's letting him swing away. Yeah, it is. And that, that's now, exactly why. Yeah, if you're thinking about bunting for a hit, it's a different story. And that one almost got away, but for a very good stop by Martin Maldonado. Shading him a little bit to the left. Good eye. And the count two and one. That'll get the job done. And the base hit. So they're going to wave Tyler around. Here's the throw. It's cut off. Finn Sox lead it two to one. They're doing the right thing turns into gold for Micah Johnson. He drives in run number three. He pulls the ball to the right side. At the very least, he's going to move Tyler Flowers to third base. But this finds a hole. Between the diving Rogers and Gomez. And Tyler turns it on and scores. Here's Chris. He struck out his first trip. Takes a strike. Two, four, and one for us, one, two, and one for them. You're in the top of the fifth inning if you're just joining us. There he goes. Well, what a gun. But he beats it. Goes just a tad high. But he got, ooh, that kid can throw. I told you that he was a real good catch it and throw it guy. And this is the bunt and run. Good break by Micah Johnson. The throw is a touch on the third base side of second. He got it down there quickly. But Micah can really run and he gets in and beats the play at second base and does a nice job going in as hard as he did of keeping his hand on the bag and not having it fly off. So the 0-2 count. And that's one out. Friday, May 22nd, come and see the White Sox take on the Minnesota Twins at 7:10. All fans are invited to stay for a spectacular post-game fireworks show presented by Magellan Corporation. Purchase tickets today by visiting whitesox.com or calling 866-SOX-GAME. Well, here's Eaton. Adam has struck out and grounded to second. Big run out there, Adam. So fires came home with that when Segura was going over to try to hold on. Micah Johnson. Big mistake by most pitchers is not allowing your infield to get back into regular position. You make a pitch with your shortstop or second baseman standing on the bag, you open up a huge hole in the infield. And I'm having trouble picking up the ball off fires. He had four hits last night. He was four for five with two big RBIs. Tied up the game with a base hit. Tied it up after we were trailed at six nothing. Tied it up at seven.
not paying much attention to Mike at second base. He really didn't take a big secondary lead as the book is out on Maldonado as far as arm strength. Yet another backup catcher with a great arm. Well tipped hung on to. So two down. Six strikeouts for fires. This is best curveball by far. It up. So here's Melky. He's hit a hard comebacker back in the first inning to Fires. And a routine ground ball to short. He's 0 for 2. Nice curveball strike. Pretty good average with runners in scoring position, a robust 360. Alfielder deep. Big gap in right center if we can find it. Ahead, 29,886 last night. They're averaging 31,753. That curveball hit off the end of the bat. But we come up with a pair. We're halfway home, leading two to one.
Chris Sale's pitching line is brought to you by American Sale, and it's been pretty impressive so far. Just two hits, one earned run, four strikeouts, and nary a walk on 54 pitches for Chris. So here's Herrera, takes that breaking ball strike. Clifton will curveball up there. Herrera went out to right field. Takes strike two. Lays off the high fastball. And the 2 2 deliver. That curveball hit hard in the left center field. And this game is tied at two. Elian Herrera. Pretty amazing what Herrera has done. He's homered in three straight games. His fourth home run of the year, the fifth home run of his career. And getting an opportunity to play, he's made the most of it. A Ford home run replay. It's a rolling breaking ball. Chris has had a good slider tonight. This was not one of them. The run, well, Herrera's just been spectacular. Getting an opportunity to now play four straight games. Big hack by Maldonado, who struck out on a fastball. Craig Council said about Herrera, his opportunity is that he's finally got a chance to get some consistent at bat, something he can't do when Ramirez plays third. But with the bad back, has come a rejuvenation in the career of a guy that was known as a ping hitter his entire career until the last three games. Change up, he gone. One out. Five strikeouts now for Chris. And here's Gomez. He was the third strikeout by Chris. To the count. Herrera is high for home runs. Albuquerque, 2013, hit seven. That's a good home run hitting. <laughs> it's it's really light air. You get seven there. You can almost throw the ball out of the park. And he's got four already this year. Well, this is a good home run hitting park. Anytime you got a low fence. Ball hit hard. Nobody's going. Yeah, he will. Maybe. Yes. Good jump by Malky. Melky comes on. That ball hit off the end of the bat, and he's able to run it down. And there are two outs in the end. I'd like to have a few of them hit off the end of the bat that hard. So here's Fires, the pitcher. Can't get it. That one at 92. Little tardy on the swing, and that one rifle 
into the seats, and everybody seems to be okay. Thank goodness. He gone. Left the home run by Herrera. Go to the six. Two, four, and one for us. Two, three, and one for them. See us in for an all new episode of Beer Money presented by Coors Life. Chicago's most exciting trivia show where fans put their sports knowledge to the test. Beer Money, Sunday at 7 on Comcast Sports Network. Abreu, Garcia, and Gillespie. Game tied at 2. And that's yanked foul. And the ball guy made a diving attempt. Only to see it scamper by him. Good effort. Came up a little short. He's lost a step, I think. As <laughs> <laughs> he dove over the ball, it hit him in the forearm. Oh. He just missed it. He just missed it. Just underneath it. From May 1st to May 31st, buy four qualifying Cooper tires from participating Cooper dealers and score a voucher for four free White Sox tickets. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. Visit WhiteSox.com slash Cooper tires for more information or to redeem your voucher. Here's Avi. That's high and deep stretch. Stretch. Back at the wall. He is there. Dead gummit. So two just missed them by Abreu and Avaseel. This is the real signal that Fires is starting to lose it. And that is, he actually threw some ground balls early. Now he's starting to throw fly balls. And this one just barely stayed in the ballpark. So Fires, who has six starts, has averaged only five innings per start. He's in the sixth, and it could be that things are getting a little short for him. Here's Connor. Takes first pitch strike. I'll tell you, Clint Fagan had himself a good game tonight. Clint, home plate umpire. 
Hasn't had anybody look back and complain. Oh, and two. Four ground balls. Seven flyouts. Six strikeouts. Not surprising because he is a strikeout pitcher. Probably the most surprising part of that is four ground outs. No two. So a couple of just missed them on the strikeout. We're still tied at two. Riso gets off to a terrible start. And for the second night in a row, it appears that nothing can stop the Polish sausage from winning. I'm starting to think this might not be on the up and up. Two nights in a row, Polish sausage has run away with it. Gene Segura leads it off. His leadoff triple turned into the first run of the ball game. He's one for two. Had the night off last night, did come into the game late. And the outfield playing him straight away. That one chopped fouled on the left side. He's hit a couple of home runs this year, and he's driven in 12. His job, however, is as a table setter and as a defender. One pitch. Surprising part about this year is Segura has made eight errors at shortstop, which is a very high total in 32 games. Breaking ball. Swerve. It's Craig Council talking it over with Jerry Nara. When I talked to Craig, he said that Jerry really has helped him out with the how to be a manager aspect of this. The simple reason that Craig never managed anywhere, in fact, was an assistant to Doug Melvin. The general manager of the Brewers. He knew the guys in the organization, but he had never been in the dugout in an authority position. Jerry Nairn has been a major league manager. He said he's leaned on him. He told him early, I'm going to ask you some very stupid questions. And Jerry said, You're going to be fine. Here you go. 
well, managing a baseball game or a baseball team. As we've said many times before, football, X's and O's are very important. In basketball, X's and O's are very important. In baseball, they don't mean very much at all. I think there's some guys sitting right down in the first and second row around the ballpark that can probably. Well, you've heard me say that. Yeah, they, they, Fans they, they, know the when, they know when to bunt, they know when to run. Exactly. You've heard me say many times here. Now, you've got some, don't get me wrong, you've got maybe five. Possibly 10% of the managers in big leagues. Who do some stuff that's out of the box, which will probably be the norm down the road. But right now, it's just handling people. It's putting people in the right spots. And if there's one big thing that you have to do is find out what they can't do and then don't ask them to do it. Another factor about managing a baseball team is understanding. How to use your pitching staff, how to make sure that you keep them healthy, how to make sure they don't rust away or wear away as the year goes along. Now, that's the reason I think former pitchers on the baseball team. I try to find me a former pitcher who knows a little bit about the game rather than a guy who knows more about the game and nothing about pitching. Chemistry today is more important than the seventh pin. When you got a minimum salary of over half a million dollars, it's handling the people, getting them ready to play each and every day, and don't taking any, don't take any stuff from them. He gone. Chris is using that high fastball. He's using it very well. He's going by a whole lot of these Brewer hitters. At 95, that's plenty, especially upstairs. There's Braun. He's grounded out three to one and one to three. But everything in this game is tougher than it ever has been. That one's fired over. But here's the play he made. Watch this play. <laughs> it's not an easy one to work on in spring training. Apparently, Chris has found a way to do it. Well, a lot of guys would go out there in spring training and work on catching fly balls behind their back. I tried that one time. Ball hit me right in the back of the neck. I think in Arizona, that would be not a good thing because it's tough enough to catch him when you're looking at him. Just yeah, got a piece of it. Yes, he did. He gone. So he strikes out the side. And we're into the seventh. Still tied at two.
Murray, two, four, and one, two, three, and one. You're in the top of the seventh inning. You've got Alexi, Flowers, Micah Johnson. Like they started off that two run fifth with a double right over the bag at first, but it was hit hard. Flips a curveball up there. Checks it up, takes a strike. And managing today is one of the toughest things managers do is handle media. He's got to handle them pre. He's got to handle them post. Yeah. And it's ever present, and it's getting more and more one of the great responsibilities of being a major league manager. Yeah, with the social media, so to speak. But all that is great. I think it's great because it gets more fans. It expands your fan base. It gets more fans involved. Two and one. Eight days on the job, and his team is playing a whole lot better baseball. That right, is popped up. Maldonado. A Sox fans, the Xfinity Fundamentals deck overlooks left field at U.S. Cellular Field. It's accessible from the 100, 300, and 500 levels. Learn baseball fundamentals from Chicago White Sox Training Academy coaches. And there's batting and pitching cages, base running areas, and more. It's all from Xfinity, your home for the most live sports. So here's Tyler. Tyler's had the best two at bats against Mike Fires. He had a line drive. To left field, and then he doubled into left center and scored. Curveball high. We saw Will Smith last night, and he's loosening up again. Last night he pitched two thirds of an inning. Gave up three runs on two hits. He did not go. It is fair to say with Smith, there was an error made behind him, and those runs were unearned. Nary a walk for Fires yet, as he's been pretty good tonight. But he's right at the 100 pitch mark. That ball smashed into center field. Tyler's is three good at bats. He's right on this one. It's a fastball. It's on the outer third. But he's lost a couple of miles an hour velocity wise. These are fastballs now at 89. He started out and stayed for a while at 91, but again, averaging just five innings per start. He's pretty much in uncharted territories. We'll see how patient Craig Council is with him. Here's Micah. One for two with an RBI and a stolen base. Maldonado kept it right in the area. And checking some other scores for you. Top of the tenth inning in Detroit. Twins and Tigers are tied at one. Final from Cleveland. Cardinals beat the Indians 8 3. Top of the six in Texas, Kansas City 4. Rangers 3. Bottom of the ninth in Cincinnati, Atlanta, and the Reds are tied at 3.
2 0. San Francisco leading Houston 8 to 1, top of the six at the juice box. Tampa Bay beat the Yankees down to St. Pete 4 to 2. Toronto thumped Baltimore 10 2 at Oriole Park. Pittsburgh over the Phillies 7 to 2 at Citizens Bank Park. Looks like Fires is starting to get very vulnerable. That stuff isn't near as crisp. He doesn't have as good a command of it. Let's see if Micah can take advantage. He's got to count. And now it's swinging off. Cubs leading the Mets 3-0. That's in the bottom of the sixth. And that's ball four. It took so long. He called it. Michael was trying to get that elbow pad off, and it was stubborn. So Didn't first come walk. Off. And here comes Craig Council. I know that he and Rick Kranitz probably noticed that Fires was losing it. So they go to the bullpen. It's going to be Will Smith. So we'll step out and be back after these messages. Uniform by pre ordering a limited edition Paul Canerco farewell to our friend book. This 50 plus page book is available for just $35 with all proceeds benefiting Chicago White Sox charities. For more information, visit whitesoxcharities.org slash PK books. Our Honda call to the pen is Will Smith. A very big left hander appeared in 78 games last year. He's appeared in 16 this year. He's 1 0, his ERA 245. He's got a nasty slider. 16 strikeouts in 11 innings. And the first man he's going to look at is Chris Sale, who most likely is going to be laying it down. Or become number 17. <laughs> or maybe both. Corners in close. Smith. Oh, they're going to go to third and can't go to first. Good hustle by Chris. But two down. Well defended by the Brewers. Herrera was charging. Seguro went to third base. Chris does a nice job of putting the bunt down and puts it down where he should, right at third base. But they decided to defend it that way, and fortunately, Chris Sale was hustling down the line. Otherwise, that's two and out of the inning. 
I don't understand why that wheel play is not working more. I love that play. That is just an absolute. As here is Adam. It makes it awfully hard to successfully bunt. If you're charging hard with both the pitcher and the third baseman and the shortstop is covering third. Very difficult. Greatest organization in the last 50 years. Making it tough to bunt with Baltimore Orioles. Wasn't happening. They put stands. so much pressure. Oh, they worked their behinds <laughs> off. They put so much pressure on the bunter. It was just. They took the bat right out of his hand. In Miami at the time, it wasn't a big facility. He had one ballpark and then what they called the little field, a half field in the back, and that's where all the work was completed by the Orioles. I think if the team saw what the Orioles worked on all those years and where they worked, they couldn't stop laughing. Facilities were awful, but they certainly got the job done. Well, when you had men on first and second in a bunch situation against Baltimore, you were actually on the defense. Well, you had to worry about a pickoff at second. You had to worry about a catcher calling a pickoff play from behind the plate and then throw to second. As well as a few other variations that we have played. That's into left field. That's can of corn. So we have a mild threat. Can't do anything with it. Seventh inning stretch tied at two. And tomorrow night, join us for the series finale right here from Miller Park as our Sox look to build some momentum before we head out to the West Coast for that three game weekend series against Oakland. Coverage starts at 7 on CSN Chicago. Meanwhile, we got some work to do right here. Tied at two, bottom of the seventh inning. Gomez will lead it off. He'll be followed by Rogers and Herrera. Gomez has reached on an arrow and has an infield single. And Lexi comes off the back, but he gets it. He tagged him on the head, and fortunately, he's able to hold on to the baseball. Because that throw was off the mark. Craig Council now. He wants to check it out to see if indeed he did get him. And it would appear that he did. So one out. And a speedy man retired. 
And a good play by Abreu. Well, it just goes to show you the intimidation of speed. That's all. Makes infielders rush their throw. Outfielders throw wildly. Pitchers. You get a tight sphincter. <laughs> For all the young fans out there that never saw Ricky Henderson play. You can't believe how tight young pitchers got when he came up to the plate. There's a strike. Good straight change on a fastball count. That's in the right field. Should be a can of corn. Two down. Shy Sox Bar and Grill at U.S. Cellular Field is the official postgame headquarters of the White Sox. Appetizers are half off after every home game. And the two story bar features 70 flat screen HD TVs. Shy Sox Bar and Grill is located at the Gate 5 Plaza. Talking about Ricky Anderson, the only man in baseball history ever walked more than he did was Barry Bonds. Ricky was second. Babe Ruth was third. And of course, with Ricky, he's the one guy you didn't want to walk. He got in such a low crowd that he almost had no strike zone, and he could hit the ball out of the ballpark. So that made it doubly tough. And he, he was, was one a low-ball hitter. Fastball hitters in the league. Well, that's popped up. Watch out. Like has got to give way. Got to get out of there. Meanwhile, a quick one, two, three for Chris. He needed that, and we're into the eighth. Very strong run in the early going. On for the 14th time, he's 3 0, his ERA 1 0 8. 16 strikeouts to 16 and 2 thirds. Although he hasn't given up any runs, he's probably walked a few more than he would like. And he comes into a tie ball game. It's tied at two as we head into the top of the eighth inning. Time now for the ATT Uverse Multiview. And Micah. As soon as he hears Avi calling for it, he's got to get out of the way. Fortunately, Avi doesn't collide with him as Micah puts it away, but not That's good not communication. That's not the way it's supposed to be done. No, not good communication at all.
So we got the right guys coming up. Melky, Abreu, and Avi. Blazek. Out of Las Vegas. Twenty six years old. Just over his head. They get him. Boy, that's a nice play right there. That is a nice play by Hector Gomez. Gomez has a big arm because he's been a lifetime shortstop. But it's a do or die play. He's got to come in. He's got a bare hand and throw it in the same motion. This is a big effort. He gets it there, just an eyelash ahead of Melky. And he got the perfect hop to make the bare handed catch and throw. So here is Jose. He just missed one last time up. Blazek was originally selected by St. Louis, a 35th round draft pick in 2007. Milwaukee got him from the Cardinals to complete a deal, which sent John Axford to the Cardinals. Big rip. He got real lucky with that one. It was a breaking ball that hung over the inner portion of the plate. That could have easily made it a 3 2 game. Take a look at the Toyota pitch tracks. A hanging breaking ball just spinning right there. That one at 82, way off balance. Tigers in 10 innings beat Minnesota 2 to 1. And the Cavs beat our Bulls. One oh six one oh one. They have a 19 and two run. There is ball four. Nineteen to two runs. So here's Avi. If you take the fact that our guys. Game four did not shoot very well at all in the fourth quarter. Still just had to get beat at the buzzer. A remarkable shot by by the man, LeBron. They could have been sitting in good shape. Four and one to count. Two five and one for us. Two three and one for them. We have stranded. Five, they have stranded one. If you're just joining us, that's in the hole. So a shot by Avi picks up his second hit. It's another breaking ball that. Doesn't break sharply. And he takes it through the left side. Lavi is proving to be a very good breaking ball hitter when they're in the zone. Drills it by Herrera. And the go ahead run is at second base. So here is Gillespie. Connor. 0 for 3. Alexei on deck. I 
Maybe he's got to be on his toes down there first. This catcher can throw. Checks it up. Now he's got the catbird seat. A lot of responsibility here with Daryl Boston because a lot of catchers, the good throwing catchers that pick guys off first base as the trailer in a situation with runners in first and second, they will drop to one knee and fire behind a left hand hitter. So it's up to the first base coach to yell out if he sees, in this case, Rogers at first, even taking a couple of steps toward the bag. Well, the last thing he's got to tell Avi is don't get picked off. And that ball gets away, so it's academic. It's going to be a wild pitch. That's the first of the year for Blazek. Could wind up costing him the game. You don't see many fastballs bounce in front of the plate. That one did. Maldonado could not smother it. Now the infield in, so a chance for two. After they put him on. And there's a familiar look. Neil Cox. Loosing in the pan. And Rick Kranitz trotting to the mound. Neil Cosson. And Cliff Polite in 05. Well, what work they did out of our bullpen in helping us get to a world championship. Now Clint Fagan is going out there to tell Rick Kranitz to break it up. Let's get on with it. Of course, we had four complete games, so they didn't have to do much work in those. <laughs> Last time you'll ever see that. For you youngsters out there, they had uh, four consecutive complete games, never to be done again. All right, Alexi. Alexi started off that two run fifth with a double. He's one for three. Sacks packed with socks. One out. <laughs> Breaking ball. <laughs> curveball. Well, we'll this, take a walk. This curveball. <laughs> not all that close to Alexi, but he decides to kneel under it. Lazic's curveball is not doing a whole lot here tonight. Okay, we'll take a walk. Two and zero. Don't help him out. Abreu, Garcia, Gillespie. And a good fastball hitter at the plate. That's hit hard in the center field. That's going to get the job done. Avi into third as Abreu scores. Sox lead it three to two. Yes. Avi at number 15 as Alexi looking fastball all the way with a 2 0 count. Knowing that Blazek was having big problems getting his curveball anywhere near the plate. He gets the fastball he wants, and even though it's down, he hits a rocket to center field. 94 mile an hour fastball just turns it around, so that leads to that one out walk comes around. 
Don't stop now, boys. As here's Tyler, who has had three outstanding at bats. A line drive right to the left field, or a double into left center field, and a rocket for a single in the center. That was the fourth sacrifice fly of the year for Alexi. By far the team leader. Well, you get him in a fastball situation with the bases loaded. Is they're going to get him, but we come up with one. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth. It is three two White Sox. Of Chris Sale's pitching line is brought to you by American Sale. Seven innings, just three hits, one of them a bunt, two earned runs. He hasn't walked anybody. He's fan nine, and he's got the bottom part of the order. Here's Maldonado. Martin, 0 for 2, a couple strikeouts. Outfield for the most part, straight up. Gap out there a little bit up in left center. That pitch inside. One and one to count. Yes, he did. Bottom of the seventh in Texas, 5 4 Kansas City. St. Louis beat Cleveland 8 to 3 at progressive field. Lays off of it. He gone. Yes. Somehow he tried to duck under a fastball that had the entire strike zone just above the belt. Take a look on the Toyota pitch tracks where this one shows up. Not sure what Martin was thinking about, but he looked back at Cliff Fagan as if to say, "Where was that?" That's the 19th game, career game with double digit strikeouts. So here's Gomez, a strikeout, going out to left, and now Avi got him in right. So quickly, two gone. Bobby is just growing and growing and growing. Gerardo Parra. 
Comes out to pinch hit. He started the ball game last night. He had a couple of hits. But of course, that was against the right hander, Jeff Samardi. Well, this might be one of the few times you'll ever see a manager send a left handed hitter up to pinch hit against Chris Say. He must have a lot of confidence. Well, he does. Parra is going to be able to make some sort of contact. That and the fact that he's got a thin right handed bench. Parra is a very good player and a tough customer at that plate. You can see against left handers, he's done a pretty good job of it, but this is not the usual left hand. And that one buzzed inside. Chris falls behind 2 0. Oh. He doesn't have much choice. He's got a left handed bench tonight. Answers that question, then. There's a strike. Yeah, I mean, if he's going to go, he's got. He's got Scooter Jeanette, who we saw last night. He's got Lynn, who's a good hitter, but doesn't play against lefties. And Parra's got a 3 1 count. <laughs> and he's got Parra. It's full. Two out. Three two socks. Bottom of the eighth. And the payoff pitch. And he walks it. Did a good job of laying off. That was the sharp breaking slider. It was off the plate. And he didn't expand his zone. So the first walk issued by Chris to go along with his 10 strikeouts. And here is Segura, the leadoff hitter, who tripled leading off the ball game and scored. He's one for three. Chris, last time out to 109 pitches. He's about ready to deliver number 108. That went into the dugout. And a little tardy as Chris reached back. It was one of the best fastballs. He got that one up there at 96. That one at 96. So the count 0 and 2. Six, 96 84 grab some bench and we're into the ninth.
couple of good fastballs. He threw a great straight change. The motion was terrific. Segura goes down on strikes for the second time. And Chris Sale, after eight, will leave with a 3-2 to two lead. And that brings Neil Kotz into the game. Does not have a record. He does have a 5-11 ERA. This is 14th game. 13 strikeouts and 12 and a third. Breaking ball strike to Michael Johnson when Neil first joined us in the big leagues. And don't forget down in Texas. Alex Rodriguez came to the plate. First pitch he threw him was a fastball. And he fired it right over the first base dugout. He stepped out, got back in, threw him another fastball. There's Robbins coming out. I'm wondering if he thinks that Micah Johnson might have tipped the glove of Maldonado. And that's the only thing could possibly be. Well, he, first base umpire couldn't have seen it. Take a look at the glove. Yeah, now, yeah. If, if, you, if you slow that down again, take a look at the glove of Maldonado. The glove right there crinkles. The only way it can do that without receiving the baseball is yeah, hit. if he hits it with the swing. Yeah. And he obviously, if they take a look at it, he obviously should be on first base. So he is. Catcher interference. E2. That would be a really big insurance run. And he's talking to him about the back of the glove now. It is after the fact. I think if Craig Council is thinking about challenging this, he will find that he did indeed hit the glove and that it's kind of a no brainer. Take another look. You watch the glove, and the glove crinkles. I don't know why he was asking Mark Rick Richter about it. He couldn't see it. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's on first. And here is Melky. Oh, check that. A Bonifacio hitting for Chris. Here's a bunt, and it is a beauty. Throws it away. Now here's the throw over to third base. And he missed it. He now, says. Herrera is going to say that he got him. And now we'll have to see. If in fact they challenge this one. Council says he wants to challenge it. With nobody out, this particular play is not a particularly good one. Joe McEwing down, saying the slide hit the dirt, and he got him. He's out at third. So that will be. Well, it's a good backup on the play by Gomez. And a risky gamble with nobody out. Good solid throw. And he got him by plenty, actually. That'll be a sacrifice bunt by Bonifacio. He will call him out at third. They really don't have to. After they showed it on the scoreboard right there. <laughs> He's out. So now we got one out and a man. 
at first. So here's Adam Eaton. Okay, they're going to give him the base hit good. So no sacrifice, a base hit. And that pitch low and away. It was a good bunt, but should have been handled by Cots. He just bobbled it. Bobbled and then threw it away. And a heads up play by Gomez. Gomez made up. the play. Yeah, he did. Pretty good lead. Adam 0 for 4 tonight. He was 4 for 5 last evening with a couple of RBIs. He did not go. Outfield slightly to the left. Good speed at first. And there's a shot base hit that a boy Adam. So two on one out. Follow the White Sox all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat and the number one app for live baseball. At bat is up to the moment at any moment with in game highlights, live look ins, replay previews, radio broadcast, stat cast, and more. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. And here is Melky. I pop up. Two down. There comes the Brayu. Jose is one for three with a walk and a run scored. And he's not going to be facing Neil Cotts. He's made the call to the bullpen. So Cots goes two thirds, he'll depart, and we'll be back.
making only his second appearance of the year. And there's a look at Brandon Kinsler. He came in against the Cubs. He pitched one inning, gave up a solo home run to Starlin Castro last year. He appeared in 64 games with the Brewers. This year, could not make the ball club. Now he's back, taking the roster spot of Rod Wooten as he was optioned to AAA. And Kinsler threw pretty well in the Pacific Coast League. Betting average against a 227. That's good. He inherits runners at first and second. A huge insurance run out at second base. And he's got to face the number one run producer on his ball club, Jose Abreu. Kinsler, 30 years old, out of Las Vegas. 5'10, 190 pounds. Three eight and one for us, two three and two for them. It's right there at ninety one. Oh and one to count. Now feel straight up, spread out. Jose is a good enough hitter. If they pitch him away, the way this defense is with Gomez on the third base side of second, this is a radical shift. Down ball, base hit. So here he comes. He's going to score. It's a 4 2 Sox lead. I couldn't believe as many runs as Abreu's driven in by hitting the ball to the right side that they would have that kind of a shift against him, leaving the entire right side open. And he just hit a little ground ball, right at straightaway second. And he drives home run number 20. See the completely open right side, even though Rogers is well off the bag. This is a routine ground ball that turns into goal. Don't stop now, boys. Here's Avi. They're going to do the same thing. Avi can go that way if they want to go away from him. Avi, two for four tonight. He's even got a bigger hole because. Rogers has got a hold of Brady Ball. Oh, and one to count. Alfield playing him just like they did. Because that's down to third base. Long peg toward away. In time, but we. Get a break. They made a mistake. A break you made them pay, and we lead it four to two.
Mike, and here's our Miller moment, and it comes off the bat of Alexi Ramirez. He had a 2 0 count. He's looking fastball all the way, and he drills it to center field, his fourth sacrifice fly of the year. This broke a 2 2 tie. And hopefully, it turns out to be the winning run. So, Emilio Bonifacio, who came on to pinch bunt, stays in the game at second base. And David Robertson. Comes on. He's trying to pick up his sixth save of the year, and this is seventh opportunity. Davis, Braun, Gomez. The iron of the Brewer order. Davis 0 for 3 with a couple of strikeouts against Chris. So Luke's dead. Delivers low and away. Just tuning in. 4 9 and 1 for us. 2 3 and 2 for them. Now it evens. We have stranded nine, and they have stranded but two. So as you can see, sale. Just a little bit of awesome. <laughs> Chris, it was pretty dominant tonight. Chris. Three hits, one walk, eleven strikeouts. And the count one and two. Just got a piece of them. He go. Uses the good sharp breaking curveball and has Davis well out in front of it. So three strikeouts in his 0 for 4 and a big first out. Here's Ryan Braun. He's 0 for 3, but he did pick up an RBI. Got a man on third, one out, and just hit a little ground ball to the right side. Got the job done. Good rip into the mezzanine souvenir. Tomorrow, Jose Quintana against Jimmy Nelson, and that game will be right back here on Comcast Sportsnet. And we'll have an off day on Thursday and Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from the Coliseum in Oakland. Two. Yeah, that one foul. RBIs in this game by Brave, by Alexei, by Flowers, and by Micah Johnson. He gone. Two down. If they're looking at that curveball for a while. 91 mile an hour fastball up 
is just too much to handle even for a good hitter like Braun. He swings right through it. So here's Gomez. Our, our rotation out in Oakland is going to be Jordan, Danks, and Samarja. Carlos Gomez one for three. Got a bunt single. And the count evens at one. You're just talking about pure bat speed. This guy here has got just about as much bat speed as anybody in this league. He will turn it loose. One and two. And for whatever reason, 91 out of the hand of David Robertson. Looks like 96 or 7 out of the hand of a whole lot of other pitchers in this league. That's high and deep in the center field. But we got a man there. Yes! And this ball game is over! So the Sox. Even up this series of the game of peace, Chris Sale was just 